okay, so we have these two questions that are reading questions, as in they are meant to check your reading of the textbook when you are going through the circuit intro. And uh, they, these are not from the uh, textbook them itself, uh, but there was uh, uh, another uh, physics instructor who wrote the question. I saw it in the question bank that I was using, and I decided to put it in because it's good to just to uh, check your understanding of the reading um, and kind of uh, you know uh, let you know where you stand before you start doing the harder questions. So here it asks the uh, direction of conventional current is defined as um, okay. So by conventional current, what do they mean? So you can imagine a wire and you would say there's a current that's flowing in there. And I guess one of the things that will tell you um, some of the nature of this current flowing is imagining putting it into a magnetic field. Like if you put it into a magnetic field that goes like this, the magnetic field, magnetic force on the segment of current is given by I DL, so infinitesimal magnetic field, uh, DL cross B. So I DL is the amount of current times the you know length of the segment DL. Um, so you know DL, let's say it's going left to right, cross B, it's uh, uh, coming out of the page. So um, the magnetic force comes out of it. And, as you are thinking of this, if it felt like we are treating this as a positive quantity, that's because, yes, we are. We are the conventionally the direction that we mark for current is the direction of motion we would have if the current, the charge carrying particles were positively charged particles. Now, um, so you know. Oh, so I guess that is actually one of the options. The direction that positive charge would flow, yeah, if uh, your charge carriers were positive. And there are some limited set of circumstances where that does actually happen in a semiconductor where the charge carrier are the electron holes. So in a more, uh, in a more um, common scenario where this is just a uh, I don't know, regular copper wire, then what actually flows are the electrons that's moving in the opposite direction from a uh, current. So if that's one of the choices here, I would choose that, you know, um, the opposite to the direction of the electron flow. Like that, I would choose that, but since I don't have that, the next best thing is this one, the direction that positive charge would flow if your charge carriers were uh, positive charges. But in most conduct, well, in all conductors, it's not. In some semiconductors, you could have positive charge carrier. So submit. Yep. Okay. Let's go to the next question. We'll just do them together since uh, um, they are both uh, um, reading check questions and they are kind of of similar um, um, difficulty. Um, so here, I guess the best way to know the answer is to just to um, look it up in the textbook. <laughs> now, I've, I, I know, um, having done, dealt with the circuits enough, I do know um, this uh, kind of shocking thing when you first see it for the first time, that the velocity of these charge carriers, especially the drift velocity, not the thermal velocity, meaning you average all the different ensembles of charges and look at how fast are they moving together as a group. And that drift velocity, it's shockingly small. It's really, uh, it's really slow. It's, uh, um, I mean, it's definitely way, way slower than the, uh, the speed of the signal propagation. Um, and that really uh, shockingly s slow speed is this in most uh, uh, conductors. Now it can be higher if you have uh, either a really poor conductor or uh, uh, some of the semiconductors, but in like copper, this would be the typical drift velocity. It's a reading check question. I'm pretty sure textbook covers it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I think uh, people simply guessing without having read it or learned this fact somehow would choose like the first choice here or maybe even 10 to the eight because you know, you think a speed of light. Uh, but it's shockingly small. 